So you want to become a UX designer and you're trying to determine if you want to go to boot camp, university, or keep everything self-taught. Well, I've done it. I have some knowledge. So let's get it. So when it comes to becoming a UX designer, a lot of people don't really know which route they should take. You have so many different boot camps, you have so many different universities, and there's so many courses online and books that you could read and do that could help you be like, oh my gosh, I don't know where to go. Decision fatigue, paralysis of analysis, whatever you wanna call it, I know how hard it is to really start to decide on which subject or which venue or route you should take. And I'm gonna tell you straight up, the real reason that things are so hard to decide on is because it all depends. It really, really just depends. Some people will tell you go self-taught because these universities or boot camps don't teach you enough. A boot camp will tell you don't go self-taught or go to university because they don't have what we have to offer, which is an amazing experience that strictly focuses on you. Universities have taken the leadership of education for the past however many years of being, if you don't have a higher education in college or a university program, what are you really doing with your life? So I can understand where it's hard for you to really decide on which route makes the most sense. But as I said before, it depends. Really gonna be exploring what you're really looking for and what you really want. And I'm just here to help bounce some ideas off with you on some different things that I've experienced or seen in these different institutions and help you with making that decision yourself. Because at the end of the day, no matter what I say, it really depends on your life and what you can do. So before we get into the actual three different things, I'm going to have a few questions that I want you to ask, answer for yourself. The first question is, do you want to be full-time or part-time? I think that's very important because if you're looking for something that's a little bit more full-time, I'm expecting you to be like, okay, I no longer want to be X thing that I was doing before. I'm ready to become a full UX designer. And when it comes to being a full-timer, there's a lot of things that come with it where you probably are going to have to put in more hours. You're going to be looking to change some of like how you show up in the world as I'm no longer a customer service rep or I'm no longer a physicist. I am a UX designer. You have to change yourself and change your embodiment of what your role is of becoming a UX designer. Now, those other things aren't unimportant, but this is something that you like laser focus and thinking like, this is what I want to be. This is how I want to show up in the world as a professional. That's where a lot of people go into the full-time UX designer role. And you want to change your title to UX designer. You want to do the work that's related to UX designer. What I've seen with people that as they've done part-time courses is part-time courses usually goes on the lines of just adding the skill onto their skill set. So it's not necessarily I want to switch out and spend all my days doing research, doing wireframes, doing visual design, doing content writing, any of those subcategories of UX design, but I work with them. I work with a product as a product manager, or I work as an engineer, and I really just want to understand those processes better so I could speak that language a little bit more, or I could communicate more. I could start adding some of those principles into my day-to-day -day work and life. So this is where a lot of what part-time people do, instead of just going full gung-ho and being like, you know what, I'm dropping all everything that I have right now, and I just really want to come into that next space. So I really think that you should answer that question of like, do you want to be full-time with this? or is this something that you're adding as a tool to your skill set, but it's not going to become your main bread and butter? This helps you with determining like how many hours you need to put in. What are the things that you really want to focus on? Maybe if you're not looking to become a full stack UX designer, you're not going to need to learn all of the different things that comes with being a UX designer. Maybe you just learn a little bit more about how to do a res do research because the practices in UX look interesting and you're in a research role and this could really help you with empathizing and creating a better experience. Um, are you going to be somebody that's has done a lot of sketching sessions or does it work with products a lot? So you just want to be able to better get your ideas on paper after you find out what the, what the needs are. So these are things that you really have to determine yourself and see where you are in your role. Because I've seen many people come into UX design 
as just part-time and still just did phenomenally because it helps add so much to their work. A lot of people come in as full-time because this is what they want to do. I want to design products. I want to design experiences. I want to design services. And this is who I am today. That's what I decided to do. But really, you have to answer that question for yourself first. So now that we got that out of the way and we answered those questions and we're really trying to determine how far we want to go with UX and at least where we are now. And don't worry, you're able to change later if you start working on UX and you're like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. So don't feel anything bad about it. If you don't have that decision of going into UX gung ho, it's all at your own pace and all that you see is most fitting for your life right now. So the first one that we're going to be investigating, what we're going to be looking at is the traditional old college or university. College and universities have been around for a long time. They help form establishments of helping to teach us a lot of critical skills that we are then able to put within the workforce to help better those around us and even further along with things going so internet based. So when it comes to being in a university level or a college courses when you're taking, some of the things that have come really good at it is you get something accredited from the college, especially if something that's respectable and you know it's a lot of hard work to get into the programs, that, can, that just adds a little bit more oomph to your resume. Granted, it may not be the most important thing to everybody when you start going into the industry and realizing it, but you could expect from an outside perspective, people could look at that as like, you know what, this is this person's pretty good. They really got their stuff together. Another thing that they could be looking at as a positive is that you get a certificate at the end of it. So something you can hang up on your wall. If you're doing something like a YouTube channel or something, you can always have people and be like, look, I did this, I got this, don't worry about it. So it's really good to have something like that that could give you that type of structure. Another thing is, is that universities break things down for you a lot when it comes to the course load and it leaves you a little bit flexible. So because some things are your core and they have a schedule of how to make you really learn one subject at a time, focus on it, prepare for it and go on to the next one, it gives you a chance to get a little bit of a deeper dive into different subject matters because you're going to have a bunch of peer reviewed and academic work around it. So you could get a little bit more comfort in the fact that somebody has reviewed this, other people have reviewed it. These are things that are getting challenged and that we can challenge ourselves and really learn from. And I think that's something that we could really look from a university perspective of being really nice. So. Now we got to talk about what's not so good about universities. With universities, you don't always get to connect the dots as easy. It's great to have different classes and have all those different experiences, but sometimes it could be disjointed, especially if you want to be somebody that does the end to end process and really understand how everything works together. It's really hard to get yourself into that mentality of I'm going to just take this and let it lead into this. So that's something that you really have to worry about and just be aware of when it comes to the university. Also, you probably won't be getting a lot of one on one time with your professors when it, in university classes is usually a limited amount of time. They're usually there and they have office hours. So you have your lecture or you have your your seminars and then outside of the seminars, it's really hard to get that time. And also you're sharing it with so many people that it's hard to bring in that extra area to get feedback from. And if you're coming just into UX design for the first time, that's something that's really crucial to you. It might not be the best solution in terms of really getting the best bang for your buck out of it. Another thing is, is that as I mentioned before, you have just like these seminars or these lectures and there's really short amount of time that they're helping you out with these. Yes, it's good if you have a busy schedule and you want to learn it a lot. If you're part time, why not? You're just looking to get that little extra knowledge, see how it applies to your work. But if you're really trying to get into like I'm a UX designer and if you're wholly relying on university, which I don't recommend and we'll talk about it later. It's hard to really just like get into like everything that you need in such a short space of time, even without all the reading. So you end up doing a lot of self studying anyways, outside of the fact of being inside the class, which is, I guess you could say it's good and it's a bad thing. The second thing that we want to talk about are boot camps. So boot camps have a lot of different ones popping up and there's different ones that people are really 
getting attached to. You could say like there are the general assemblies, the bit makers, the brain station, the red academy, whichever one you decided to go to that change or anything like that. There's so many different boot camps that are popping up and are coming into this space that so hard to really find out which one to go with. But when it comes to boot camps, I personally went to one. I think it was a great solution for me. We'll go into details as why. So the pros of it were, I really got to work on projects that like led the whole thing. So it wasn't really like working on small things here for only this and then small things here for only this where it's just like, oh yeah, you're gonna spend two days or a week on user research and then you're gonna work on something else. Like they really allowed me to take all the different parts of UX design and start to piece them together little by little. Granted, I had to learn the smaller projects first and I, I got, got like to my final project where I really got to get into the nitty gritty and do everything within the workflow that I was learning. But as really being able to work on project base to see how it was applied to something, it really helped me to focus and get myself in the know. Another really good thing is that for me, I'm not somebody that does well when I'm trying to learn a subject of just being left alone for an entire week after spending two hours with you. I understand for me, life happens. I had, I have work in between and work could be stressing me out and be like, oh no, I really want to get into the work so I don't have to deal with this anymore. Or you have family that you're doing things and you're like, I can't spend time with this, I can't do that. So I think there's a lot of excuses that could be made in the interim that prevents you from really pursuing this and really getting it, like going out and getting it. So that's something to be very cautious of, but being inside of the program, let me know I was there eight hours a day, five days a week. So there's no way if I'm putting them out this amount of time that I'm going to be like, well, I didn't have time for you. I'm there. I'm sitting in class. I have to do the work. What am I going to do but the work? And I thought that was super helpful for somebody like me because I like to be immersed in things. I like to be in it and just be always in it. And I don't want to be like thinking about it while I'm working like, oh man, I can't wait to get to UX. I can't wait to get to UX. So that's something that really helped change my mind and in going into that route. Another thing that's really good with UX design when from a boot camp for me was having those teachers available for that whole eight hours like really so good i'm sitting there when i get frustrated and i'm like oh my god what is this i don't know how to do this who could somebody help somebody's there to help and i thought that was so amazing for me that i have somebody that always was ready to go because if you looked at me and you saw how i was learning and how i think i was getting i was the one that was like most vocalized about the frustrations of i can't figure things out and then i go and i look at other people and be like hey what are you doing or i go to my ta and be like hey i did this uh does this work so having that type of interaction human interaction really like you see me getting a little bit excited right now like gave me so much more life and energy to like continue moving forward than just being like a hey we're gonna talk about it a little bit okay everybody we're good bye i'll see you next week so i thought that was really good so when it comes into the things of talking about the cons of the boot camp experience i say that it was a huge upfront cost um for those that don't have the means to be able to do it as easily, it's they do have programs where you get like, we call it OSAP in Ontario, which is basically like a student loan. So they do have things like that, but I, I tell you the truth, I was the brokest in my life that every time period. It worked out for me, but if it's something that could really compromise your family and like affects your life on a regular day basis, I'd really caution towards putting that big investment because it's not always as quick of a turnaround of getting the job as it seems to be through the marketing of boot camps. Another thing that was about the boot camps is there's Sometimes you don't get a good, deep, chunky, meaty dive into the material of the areas that you really love. You're trying to learn so many different concepts so very quickly that you're like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I'm not very good at this, I'm not very good at that, but I'm gonna try and piece it together as quickly as I can. So it, it could feel a little bit like, especially if you're kind of removed from design a little bit more, it could feel like you're rushing and you're doing things a little quick. So you got to really understand what a healthy pace for yourself is. There's usually homework due every day. There's so many hours that you're spending a day already and to do more. So you really have to commit your time and dedicate that like, you know what? This is what I want to do. So let's do it. And I think for the full-time course, it was a lot 
more like that than a part-time course because part-time courses you're able to kind of just be like all right i'm just going to be there for the day and then i'm just going to come back in a in a week or so but i don't really need to think about it but if for me when it came to the full-time i really needed that but hey sometimes you can't get all of the things that you want at the pace that you need when it comes to having these different types of programs that are already preset on how your learning is going to go at least in their term the third and final way to learn ux is self-learning so granted this is something you're going to have to deal with for the rest of your life there's not going to be a point in your life that you're not gonna have to teach yourself when it comes to using these skills because universities or boot camps are only as far as they can reach when it comes to doing these skills and where it's just like, okay, we're handing it off to you and now you go with all this knowledge and do what you can in the world. So some of the things that I find really good about self-learning even when it came to the beginning was I could set the pace for myself. When you're, If you're somebody that's very organized yourself you find it very easy to come up with your own schedule and you find it very easy to really get into the nitty gritty of things and you could keep yourself accountable. You go work in a day, you go do this at the night and you can separate them. This is some, a method or a way of getting into UX that I think is super effective and it's really good because nobody's telling you how you should learn. Nobody tells you the material you should be working with. You just get to explore all the different areas. You could look at books, you could take these smaller courses, um, just depending on how you feel. You can YouTube stuff. You could see so many different methods of really just getting to know more about UX and who's going to tell you what's the right or the wrong way. Another thing that's really good is you can start working on projects and a lot of people that I've seen that were self-taught start applying these skills a lot more a lot earlier in their phase versus later. I think that can happen when you're in a boot camp or in a university the feelings of, oh, I need to get this right, or I really need to understand it, and these guys are gonna teach me, and I'm gonna be a UX designer when I really get to the end of these, and things like that. Those hold a lot of people back from actually doing the work. Go and taking on a volunteer project, go and taking on freelance projects, go in and producing projects or work that they're gonna be putting in their portfolio. You could be held back a lot if you don't start doing those projects early, and I think self-teaching helps a lot with that aspect. Another great thing about self-learning is that it's the one method that you're going to be carrying with you for the rest of your life. You're going to finish university, that's the end of the class, you may lose access to the readily available information of those people. When it comes to um, boot camps, same thing. You may be able to connect with people, but at the same time, at those points, you're going to have to learn how to do this on your own and how to keep going on your own. So it's really good to learn that skill a little bit earlier that this is my journey. This is my career that I'm handling. So I'm going to take the reins and just like really go at it, go at it, go at it, go at it. So it really helps you get into that mindset a little earlier than later and not make you so reliant on other people telling you what is the best course of action that you should be taking when you could help make and develop that yourself. Granted. You know, and some things that are going bad with it and the flip side is you could end up just going and shooting in the dark in so many different places. I look, I tend to look at it as a scatter plot where you could be like, oh, I learned UX design here. Okay. But then they told me UI, UI design, but then research, the information architecture, but then this. So it's just like you're starting to move all the different areas and it's not very easy to just find a line that gives you the best results. That's something that could end up happening when you're going and doing that route of yourself. So it's really good to find somebody to help you with navigation and putting the pieces together so that it makes a little bit more sense for you on, okay, if I do this, it'll work this and this and this and this and this. Oh my gosh, that's how it all works together. Not just like by myself trying to figure it out because that could end up being something very hard. Another thing that happens with self-learning is the motivation aspect. Well, a lot of people say motivation is BS and yeah, it has many degrees of being BS because you could be, yeah, yeah let's do it today. Let's do a new year's resolution. We're great. We're, we're just like sitting and playing games again and it's fine. And it's like, we understand that, but it's really hard to like say, Hey, you're not motivated. You're not accountable to anybody but yourself for this learning. So if you're not somebody that has been classically good with doing this or know how to really keep themselves accountable and get the work done even when they don't want to. Self-learning could really hold you back from just being able to get things done because you're like, I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do, so I'm not gonna do it. And 
you don't want to stop growing and progressing just because you have you can't schedule it or you refuse to schedule it whatever the case is i hope you could figure out that for yourself and how it fits within your life and another thing that i find that's a little harder for people that are self-learn especially if you're somebody that is not really willing to put themselves out there and really go and engage with other people i won't say so much introverted because introverted i think is just like the way you get your energy back but if you're somebody that's like I don't really like asking people for this or for that. And you're somebody that's really shy about doing those things. Even if you're extroverted, those are things that could really hold you back from being able to connect with people within the industry, which universities and boot camps can already have a network of people that understand where you're coming from. And you'd be like, it's a lot harder to cold reach out to people when you don't really have a relation or a subject to talk about versus those other things. So it's really, Finding that network could be a little bit harder and engaging you in, but I'm not saying that it's not something you can do. It just becomes harder when you're the only one that's focusing on that and like actually taking care of that aspect of it. So we spoke about all of this. There's so many different resources that you have online. There's so many different ways that you can go about it and just really have to go back and look at with the pros and the cons, what what am I gaining from this experience of going university route? What am I losing when it comes to an experience going on the boot camp route? And what, how does it all fit together when I'm going to self learn? Like these are things that you're going to have to figure out for yourself when it comes to this. And I just hope that I could provide you the tools and you are listening intently to really, really get some benefit out of it. So another thing that we want to make sure is that regardless of with pa which path you take, the most important thing is your mentality. If you go into it and you expect, hey, I'm going to go and I'm going to become a university graduate, I'm going to get the certificate and I'm going to be a UX designer, or I'm going to go into a boot camp, I'm going to crush it for these 10 weeks and I'm going to be hireable the next day. Or even like any of these courses that you go or like I read this book and now I'm a subject matter expert in everything UX. That is the incorrect mentality to go to go through. It's a journey. It is a path that we're all choosing to take. And I only hope that you take the time to just really allow yourself to go at the pace that is comfortable for you and understand like when you decide to become a UX designer, when you decide to add those skills, it means you already have it. It means you are already it. You don't need the certification. You don't need these courses to really validate all of that. But you'd still want to gain the skills and you want to like learn a little bit more so that you can show how much you've improved as a designer. You could say, oh yeah, I'm a UX designer on day one, but they won't be able to reflect. You'll be able to reflect the skills of somebody that's like very beginning, but that doesn't mean you're not a UX designer. And the best thing is you have only up to go from there. So I hope you guys really found out a lot of good information from this video. I do want to thank you for listening. Hope that you like and you subscribe to the video down below. And let's get more people learning about UX. Let's get more of this happening because, hey, we need more of it. Thank you and peace.